Hello, welcome to this video featuring a student parent notification system. Probably easiest for the purposes of this video to use the sample spreadsheet that I have created. And that is available right now at tinyurl.com slash JLMS PBIS. If that location changes, I'll post an update in the comments. When you start with that, spreadsheet, you'll note that in the green shaded area of the form responses one tab, it says there it has the fields that we need to retrieve off of a, a Google form. And you can see that this one is a sample. The form has been unlinked. Um, so what we need to do is create a form that has these questions in it. So once you've made a copy of the sample spreadsheet, then you can go ahead and create a form. I have done that already. So we have student name. Probably the easiest way is to grab those from your student information system. I'll go ahead and copy them here. Just click on the first option and paste them in. It'll paste them all in for me. There are other ways to do that uh, automatically or have it automatically update using Form Ranger or other add-ons that, uh, that can be covered and has been covered in, uh, other, in another video. Um, we also need to make sure that we have the recognition chosen as part of this form. Again, we'll go back to the form responses sheet. We, we know that we need to uh, collect the student name. We need to uh, verify what the student was recognized for. Location may or may not be important to you. And then optional comments. We've actually found that the optional comments are the most valuable part of the form. So once we have those elements of the form, we'll also need to make sure, can't forget, to collect uh, email addresses as part of it. And you'll want to restrict it to your school district users so that that email address is collected automatically. So once we have that information collected, then we'll need to tell the form where to send the responses. In this case, you can go to select existing spreadsheet and then you go to select. That'll bring up your drive and you'll be able to choose the, the sample copy, the, the copy of the sample copy of this spreadsheet and send the responses there. Once you've done that, you'll have a new tab called Form Responses, and you'll see that the information has been sent there. So once you have the information there, then we're gonna save some time by using this Form Response tab and copying the information from that Form Response tab over to our other sheet. One thing has changed from the other version from, from this sheet, is that, and that is the order of the fields from the form. It's not a big deal to get those changed. Uh, and I'm, I'm gonna go through the quick version of this. Uh, as always, if you have any questions on my videos, feel free to contact me. And if I get enough questions, I can certainly make a separate video certainly we'll get back to you to respond to any question that you might have. But in this case, the order has changed. You can see that B is student name and C is email address. And you can see how that has been flipped here. So over on this side, we have a, a, a few lookups that occur. And so we need to change what information um, we are using for those lookups. So in this case, we need to look up the student name really in all of these, almost all of these cases, we need to look up the student name to pull the additional information we need to be able to send the emails. So I'm just gonna change these. Instead of looking at the staff member email address, who sent the email, we'll have it look at the student name by changing these from B to C we will be able to do that. And you can have it email as many parents as you want. We have it email both 
um, uh, parent uh, one, or I'm sorry, family one and family two. And you could have it uh, email multiple emails within those families as well. Just depends on how many you want to pull from your student information system. This question asks for the staff name. And for the staff name, we needed to look at the email address in B. And you can see that there are two of them here. So we need to update both of them. So now we have all of the lookups, finding the correct information. Uh, if you have questions on lookups, again, there are other videos out there that show how to do that. Don't want to get too much into that uh, in this video because you can just make the copy and, and alter any of the fields that you need to to get the lookups looking in the proper location. So once you have the all the data in here, the form responses, and then the emails that you need, both the student, because we send a copy of our notifications to our students, as well, of course, the parents, then you can do the email setup itself. And for that, we need to go to an add-on, and we go to Form View, and we'll go to Open. We're going to select the sheet that'll be our form response sheet and we'll want to do it on form submit there are a number of other options you're going to see as we go through this setup you're welcome to read through those and, and decide whether or not you want to include them i'm going to go with the most basic setup uh, for this version oh we're only going to be sending one, one email template, but it's probably a good idea to come up with a name that will help you to remember the next time what you are doing when you set it up, because it's very easy to forget, especially if you set up multiple versions of these. So we'll re remember that this one goes to the student and the parent. And we're going to send for all rows. You can see that it's added a column. It's going to tell me the send status of any email that I set up. I'm going to set up the template. I'm going to do a very simple version of this. Uh, ours in, is more wordy and uh, includes more specific information, but I'm going to leave that up to you. So it's going to go to the student email. And as it says, we can separate multiple emails with commas. So we're also going to send it to any of our parent emails. For the reply to, we put the email of the staff member, which the way that this form is set up is just email address. That's the email address that was collected when the staff member filled out the form. Subject, we would call them Falcon Feather notifications, or in some cases, just fun to put congratulations. The body of the email, You've pulled out information that, uh, and, and used the VLOOKUPs to pull out information that you can use for your email. So for instance, sorry, dear student first name, because you've pulled that out, you can include that. We don't need the header for that. We just need the mail merge information. So now that I think about this, if I'm going to send it to my student, the parent emails are probably then carbon copied. So I'll get rid of them here. I can send it to the student and have their first name, his or her first name, be printed. And then the congratulations. Of course, oh, congratulations. And of course, you would have information in here specific to your situation, but you could also put in the optional comments and include those in any way that you see fit. Um, because you have the staff name, you can put that in there. Um, you collected the timestamp, so if you want, want to include that as well, you can do that. And then you can sign it with your PBIS team or the internal coach, whoever you want to have, be the person to sign that email. Once you're done with that, you can preview them. And so it'll, it'll preview the ones that are already in there. 
And because I have it set up to send on form submit, for future ones it'll send each time the form is submitted. Uh, so you can see the template is from the student or is the student and, and parent template. You can see it's going to go to the student email, carbon copy to the parents, and reply to the teacher. Congratulations. And there's the information that would be sent out. Important to note that you do have an email send quota of 1,500. Um, it's probably a good idea to create, uh, for a variety of reasons, an account that will send these emails. You probably don't want to do this from your personal account. Um, not a huge deal to transfer it over, um, especially once you've once you've built one. And probably a good idea to start with a practice one anyway, perhaps in your own personal account. But a good idea to create a Google account for the purposes of sending these emails. And then um, when the email goes out to the parent and the student, it comes from that account rather than um, your uh, account as the person who set up the, uh, the workflow. Because that's where it will come from is whoever set up the workflow. I could send these now, but since they're all going to be coming directly to my email, by, email inbox, I will cancel that. So again, that's the basic process of setting up this notification system. We have the sample copies I showed you before, the tab that is in here, the uh, import from our student information system, which again, depending upon the information that you import, you'll need to change fields in um, this form responses sheet when it does the lookups, the VLOOKUPs that are going on here. But um, that's, that's a topic for another video our staff, and then uh, the other uh, tabs that are on this spreadsheet are used to count the number of falcon feathers, notifications, if you will, that each student has received. And then we do drawings and keep track of who has won those drawings. One th other thing to note is that a hidden sheet has also been added, and that keeps track of the email that is sent out um, typically you want to keep that hidden because there's really no reason to be doing anything with that outside of the form mule script or the form mule add-on I should say so I'm gonna hide that back all right so if, as always if you have any questions feel free to contact me hopefully this has helped you to understand this system and good luck implementing it in your district